And Heidi, this is our first, this is obviously the first one I've done, but it's the first one we've done of the year. Is that correct? That's correct, yes. Right. Okay. <laughs> Marvellous. So we just give everyone a couple more minutes to join us. Okay, once it hits 70, it's hit 70. I'm going to start. Right. Okay. Um, so greetings, everyone, on this call. Um, this is our very first webinar of the year. And we started with one of the big guns, I think it's safe to say. And uh, this is um, a webinar about the five stages of a successful accountancy firm. This is concentrating on some of the um, soft skills and some of the non-accountancy things that we need to be aware of if we want to grow our business. Um, just a few housekeeping rules. Um, let us, i.e. Hayley, know if you've got any sound or visual issues. Uh, it's a Zoom meeting, so no hands up. Q&A is at the bottom of your screen, so please make use of that. Shane has told me beforehand he doesn't mind. In fact, he relishes being interrupted and having ongoing discussions. Um, so, so please make use of that and feel free to, to, to heckle him in the nicest possible way with the Q&R box when you, when you want to. Um, this will be recorded if you have no objections to that and you'll get a recording and the slides uh, will be sent out to you within the next 24 hours. So um, I think that's enough kind of housekeeping. Um, a little bit about Shane. He's Managing Director of AVN Inspiring Accountants. Um, as I say, he's going to concentrate on some of the peripheries to help accountants be better at their jobs, grow their businesses. So it will be not so much focus on accountancy, more the soft skills, as I mentioned, to help you um, make your business grow help you increase your income and increase your success. Um, so he's been doing that for 25 years. Um, I'm not going to build him up anymore. I'm just going to let him come on and, um, and, and speak to you all. So uh, welcome. Welcome Shane Lucas. 
Thank you very much. Really appreciate that introduction. And uh, look, I'm very grateful to uh, the IFA for inviting me on to speak to you guys today. Uh, really excited about it. And I, I want to give you a lot, a lot of value in this session. Uh, now, I do have a couple of questions, just just uh, really building on what's just been said. I do welcome interactive um, chat box text, if you like. Not, not sure if that worded right. Um, ask me any questions along the way. I will be asking you questions. A lot of research says that actually when we just sit back and listen, we only retain about 15 to 20% of the, the, the value that's being delivered. But actually when we're interactive, uh, that can double and even triple. So I would love for you to be as interactive as possible. And let's start that off by, I'm just going to ask you a very quick yes, no question. Do you feel that your practice is growing at the speed that you would like it to and simultaneously giving you the lifestyle that you really would love to have. Give us a yes or no in the chat box. There's no right or wrong. Yes or no in the chat box. Let's just see. So uh, lots of no's in there coming in. <laughs> and a smile, so that's not really giving me a yes or a no. But look, lots of you saying uh, no. Um, Yes, but want to improve further, partly. Okay, that's that's fair enough, and um, it's going to be different for everybody. And I, I shall reveal some of the reasons uh, why that might be. Coming back after retirement, okay. Uh, interesting, so thank you for that. All right, look, lots of no's in there, and I appreciate those still coming in. But let me just, I've got one more question, so uh, question two uh, that I would like to ask. Do you feel with the rate that the accountancy world is changing right now with the uh with ai coming in with new technologies coming in that your accountancy practice is as future proofed as it should be right now give us a yes or no to that one might be a bit of overlap in terms of uh, of some of the the previous stuff coming in but now, if you see me looking over here, that's just because that's the screen I've loaded the chat box on. So I can see yeses, nos in process um, to some extent. OK, so again, very mixed. But thank you for interacting uh, in the chat box. That's really what this what part was about. Now, in this session, um, as the title suggests here, I'm going to be talking through the whole journey from start to exit. Um, how to progress that accounting business growth journey. Um, actually without getting stuck, without becoming overworked and underpaid or becoming an outdated dinosaur. And there are lots of accountancy firms out there that are rapidly becoming outdated dinosaurs. Sadly, many are overworked, underpaid as well and just not really enjoying their business. So in this session, I'm going to be talking through and, and getting you to understand those five stages and what the pitfalls are that fall between them. I'm going to be sharing with you um, how to get to the best one of those journeys um, because it's the most desirable until you're ready to exit. I'm going to be sharing with you a strategy to, to ultimately achieve your personal vision. OK, now this is not me dictating what your vision for your lifestyle and practice should be. But over the past 25 years, we've worked with accountants and we've we've developed a specific blueprint that has proven every single time to put the fundamentals in place in an accountancy business that delivers what the accountant really wants. Um, and I'm also going to be giving a glimpse as to what I see the future holding for accountants. OK, so first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for joining me on this session today. I appreciate you've probably got busy schedules. You know, you've got client work that you could be doing, etc. But you've taken the time out of your busy schedule to to invest in your own education, your business education to be here in this session. So I want to acknowledge that. I want to thank you for that. And I also want to say that in return for that, I promise you that I'm going to make this session as valuable and as inspirational as I possibly can. Please let me know at the end of this session if I ticked that box for you. OK, so the three parts that I'm going to be sharing with you today are those five stages and the pitfalls. Um, what does accountancy version 2.0 look like? Now, some of us might say, well, perhaps it's 5.0. Well, this is my definition, 2.0. I think really the, the fundamentals around accountancy haven't changed massively for many years. You could argue it's been 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.2. Um, part three, then, the proven blueprint that I've just alluded to. And... I've got a little bonus for you as well, which I should share at the end. OK, so let me dive in. Part one. Part one. Let's just talk about the accounting business journey then. So we've got five stages that I've identified. Now, let me just give some, I suppose, um, 
credence to this. I personally speak to hundreds of accountants who run their own accounting business, um, you know, per, per month, per year. I'm speaking to literally thousands of people all of the time. Uh, I really get to understand where they're at in their business, what they're doing, how they've, how they've established it, where they're, you know, where they're kind of struggling at the moment. And what I've discovered are that there are these five stages. So the first one is going to be pretty obvious because let's face it, every business has to start. Okay, so a startup. And that's a really exciting time, isn't it? You know, you start up, those of you who have started up, and I appreciate some of you may have come into an existing, already established business and maybe become partner and an, an owner. But those of you who started up, that was a really exciting time. It's a new venture, you know, you're designing your, your website, you're taking on your first clients, you're, you're sending out your first invoice, getting paid, maybe you get a referral. It, it's really, really exciting. The next stage from that then is what I call... Now, I keep coming up with different terms for this, but I'm going to call it lifestyle for now, okay? Uh, but I'm going to press slash on there and call it micro as well, okay? Now, these tend to be firms that are maybe earning, generating less than 120K at the moment, okay? 120K. Um, perhaps they've... Um, Perhaps they've been able to employ maybe one or two part-time people or, or lower skilled people that, that can pass some of the low level work, the admin too. Um, but obviously it's mainly the person, the owner that's, that's doing all of the work for the clients or the majority of it. Um, and again, that's, it, it's for some people, they want to create a lifestyle business. They're happy with that. Um, for others, it's just part of the journey to the next stage. And the next stage really is what I call scaling. So this is where maybe you've reached the point where you're, you've perhaps exceeded the 120, uh, you're employing higher caliber, higher skilled employees. Uh, you can delegate more work to them. And the idea here is now I'm going to delegate much more client work to my team and scale up with the view of, you know, um, earning more, working less, etc. Uh, maybe you've got some client managing there. Now, the next stage in this journey is what I call mature. These are firms that have been going for a while, they've become established, they've, they've been able to take the foot off the gas a little bit because they're, you know, they're not scaling massively now, they're growing quite well organically, they're getting um, you know, referrals coming in but they've got a great team to support them. It's a brilliant place to be at this because the owners are just working the hours that they want to work. Again, it might be multi-partner, it might be single partner, it could be multi-million, it could just be a few hundred thousand pounds. Um, but it's running and it's running really well. And then, of course, the next one from that is exit. And let's face it, it doesn't matter which one of these you're in, exiting is inevitable. Ideally, we'd like to exit on our own terms for maximum value. Just by the way, if I put a, a quick number on these, if I say that's one two, three, four, and five. Where would you place yourself right now in that journey? Just put it into the chat box. Okay, so I've got a five so far. Um, okay, so lots of twos, some ones, three, four. So obviously we've got a, a variety here. Now what I want us to talk about is what are the pitfalls? What are the challenges that people might face here? Because there are mistakes and there are repercussions of those mistakes, etc., along the way. So, for example, quite often, and, you know, I'm not saying everybody falls into these traps, but we can experience these challenges. Quite often when somebody starts up, maybe they've, they've gone out of full-time employment and they've taken that leap of faith. Uh, and they need desperately, really, to replace the income that they were generating before. They've got bills to pay, they've got a mortgage, they've got food to put on the table, etc., uh, or maybe they've got a foot in both camps at the moment. You know, I've got, I'm still employed, but I'm trying to do this in my own time, but ultimately want to build up the new business. Um, now, the challenge is that because they're kind of desperate, they'll start taking on the low-hanging fruit. Okay, so I'm going to put desperate in here. 
they'll take on low hanging fruit um, they'll probably try and undercut the competition. Maybe they started off in their spare bedroom. They don't have the overheads. They can justify coming in a little bit cheaper just to win the work. So they come in as cheap. Okay. Um, they promise the earth. You know, they, they, they really want to please that, that potential new client. So they'll, they'll perhaps over promise uh, and be really accommodating. Okay. And so yes it might help them get established but actually this leads to problems later on as you can probably imagine in fact those problems are going to be prevalent here then once they start to to build up a bit i mean startup i would call maybe less than 30k you know you, you get a few clients in and then you're into this area aren't you so what are the problems here well a lot of these are the repercussions of um here because they they've actually got a very low and probably unprofitable uh profitable client fees or a bull <laughs> uh, fees across the board which means actually they're not earning enough profit to be able to justify employing better qualified people to help them so they can just maybe afford to uh, employ some um some lower level i don't like to use that expression but lower level lower qualified people to help them maybe part-time as well they end up being overworked Uh, underpaid because they're not necessarily taking the income that they like and they feel that they're stuck in a row you know they're just uh, every single week they're just keeping you know churning out the work as much as they can they're not getting the lifestyle that they like now some people manage to break through this they, they do achieve more than 120k uh, they start to get a little bit more profitable clients and then they can afford to recruit higher quality people um, but sometimes then the, the the challenge here is that their team aren't stepping up well they certainly don't feel that they are and so uh, these people become the bottleneck because every client and every team member keeps coming to the owner or owners for advice and input on what they should do. Um, and actually they, they start to risk burning out. Mature, I just painted a great picture of mature and mature is the ideal place to get to. We wanna be in a position where we're only working the hours we wanna work, we're earning the income we wanna uh, earn, the, the business is running largely by itself, organically growing, etc. Maybe they're doing acquisitions. But actually these people, the biggest chance for them isn't a current pain, it's a future problem. Because these get comfortable. And when we get comfortable, we become complacent and we stop focusing on uh, making sure that we're up to date with technology. So they stop being future proofed or future ready. Yeah. And that's not a current problem because you know, why change? Why change? I'm earning a great income. I'm earning the hours I want to work, etc. Why change? That's the problem here. And then finally with exit there are a lot of people that that reach the point wherever they've been that when they want to exit because for many different reasons maybe the um there's too much reliance just like here on the owner all the clients have signed up for the owner not for anybody else not for a team member not for a new buyer but for the the current owner so there's too much reliance on the um uh, the owner there um maybe there's not enough value in the practice uh, the value is low. Uh, there can be a number of reasons why exiting is just difficult. So just give me an idea. Uh, can you relate to any of the challenges that I've mentioned so far from where you're at? Just give us a yes or no in the chat box. Okay, cool. Well, uh, look, I appreciate your honesty as well. So thank you for that. Um, very grateful to you. Um, so look, next I want to share with you 
um, I, I will come on to, to overcoming this. I'm going to share with you part two, which is um, what I see as being the future of accounting and why I think it's so important that we change. Uh, thank you, those who are still coming in. I appreciate that. Um, just a, a little bit of credibility as well. So, you know, um, I, I mean, thankfully, I was uh, introduced by Paul earlier, who gave a, um, a good idea as to what I do. For 25 years, I've been helping accountants to improve their business. We put together a methodology, which I'm going to share with you very shortly. Uh, I'm author of a couple of books as well for accountants. Well, actually, a few more than a couple, but these are my two best selling ones. So, um, you know, you can grab a copy of those uh, if you wanted to. But at the end of this, I'm going to give you a copy of, for each one of these stages, and I'll come on to this, um, I've created a booklet on how to, get, how to get out of these stages, okay? So uh, you can download a free copy of whichever, and all of them if you want to, uh, is most applicable to you, okay? So I shall share that with you very shortly. Uh, so... First of all, what I want to do is I just want to set the scene a little bit here in terms of what the future is looking like for accountancy. And to do that, and I would recommend maybe replicate this yourself. So let me just put some labels. So I've got a triangle here. Hopefully you can see that triangle. Um, and I'm going to write some labels in. So the bottom one here, these labels are going to represent the categories of services that an accountancy business might want to offer to its clients. Okay, so at the bottom is the most obvious, it's compliance. Okay, compliance, it's your bookkeeping, your payroll, your VAT returns, your tax returns, your year-end accounts, all of those things will come under compliance. Okay, um, the next tier up, and these are kind of tiered in terms of the value to the client and the profitability of those services as well, uh, I would place business services. What do I mean by business services? So um, I often call it sexy accounting as well. So uh, providing management accounts, cash flow forecasting, budgeting, but actually sitting down with the client and discussing these, asking them uh, thought provoking questions about how some of those numbers might be better. So that's business services. Uh, the next one then is what I call growth solutions. Growth Solutions is basically it's business advisory. It's sitting down with the client on a one-to-one -one basis, preferably face-to-face, -face, but Zoom is okay, and providing a strategic input on how they can improve the way that they run their business, making it more efficient, more profitable, etc. Now, many accountants, when I talk about this, feel that they would have to know their client's business better than them to be able to give that advice. No, when I talk about Growth Solutions, I'm talking about utilising an accountant's skills with numbers, so everything that's comfortable to an accountant, and having those kinds of conversations with clients. Now, I don't have time to go into that in depth right now, of course. That's a future webinar. But um, that's really where my business, AVN, help accountants to progress to. Now, obviously, they're still delivering all of these, but they're delivering them as a packaged solution that includes the advisory. And then for the sake of completeness, the very top one, uh, wealth Solutions. Wealth Solutions it might be um, specialising in uh, exit planning, mergers and acquisitions, uh, those types of services that you probably charge an absolute premium for, if you value price, of course, um, but maybe they're far and few between as well. Okay, so the reason I draw it as a pyramid is because if you take this kind of vertical line here, um, the value to the client as we go higher is, um, is obviously higher from their point of view. They're going to value these services much more. And actually, you can charge a greater fee for these services. So, you know, here they're getting what they need. Here, they're getting information that's going to allow them to make better business decisions. Here, they're going to get an input that's going to allow them to maybe scale up their business, work less and spend more quality time with their families. How important would that be to them? Taking more holidays, spending quality time with their kids as they're growing up, etc. Uh, and these, of course, you know, if you if they're getting hundreds or, or millions for exiting their business, then they're obviously going to be very grateful for that. So the the level of profit for you and the value to the client is incredibly high up here 
But let's face it, it's really low down here because people, most business owners, they don't value the compliance work. They just need to get it done. They see it as a necessary evil. And I'm sure you'll agree with that. So the higher up we can deliver services, the better. Now, for 25 years, I've been helping accountants to do this, but now it's becoming much more necessary. You know, when we first started our business, the, the vision was that we felt accountants are just able to deliver these kinds of services and, and provide much more meaningful services to their clients. Now it's becoming a necessity because, um, oh, sorry, let me just pull up my other uh, chart. So I'm just going to change my screen setting a little bit. Here we go. And I'm just going to pull this slide up now, this slide, this, uh, this whiteboard. This is my definition of accountancy 2.0. So I see accountancy 2.0 as being that accountants are very much artificial intelligence empowered. AI is going to be providing them the data. It's going to be doing the compliance work. This stuff at the bottom, most of this stuff, the AI is going to be delivering. Okay, so your, your clients will still come to you for it, but it's going to be largely produced and therefore the fees that you're going to be able to charge is going to reduce even further. Likewise, for this service as well, producing this stuff is going to be automated. It already is largely, isn't it? The power is up here and having the face-to-face -face conversations. So AI empowered and actually transitioning from delivering the kinds of stuff that clients need to delivering the stuff that clients want which you are all, you know, you are all very much able to deliver. So we're changing from needs to wants. And, and ideally we're going to be providing, you know, the AI is going to produce better data. Yeah. And that's going to allow for the business owner to be able to make, well, for you actually to, to produce better analysis. Analysis, I always spell analysis wrong, so forgive me if I have done. Um, so it's gonna allow you to produce better analysis, which is gonna enable better decisions. Oops, decisions, oh, for crying out loud, I've gone pear shape. Decisions, um, and it's going <laughs> to, I've spelled that very wrong, haven't I? Um, and it's going to allow then the business uh, owners to, to get better results for their business, isn't it? Better results leading to a better business and actually a better life as a result of that. And that better life is for your clients, but also for you as a result of charging more profitable fees, delivering more value, get a better sense of fulfillment from delivering those kinds of services. So that's what I see um, the future of accountancy looking like. And, and personally, I think it's really exciting. Uh, and I hope you agree with that. So let me just go back to, if I can dig it out easily, this, this chart. Now, obviously here's one I prepared earlier. What I wanted to do is show you now that blueprint and how it works. I'm going to take you through the exact process that we take accountants through. And it doesn't matter actually where they are on this journey because we've discovered that it absolutely works. So again, if you're able to make a note of this, by all means do. Let me choose my color. The very first stage. Now, what I'm sharing with you here, by the way, are top level strategy labels. OK, and then within I'll give you an inkling as to what we cover within them. But the top level strategies are in seven stages. So the first stage is what we call clarity. Clarity is about getting off that treadmill. OK, it's easy to get stuck in a rut, get it on a treadmill. So clarity is about having a crystal clear vision as to where you can take your business to, your accounting business. It's going to give you the lifestyle that you really desire and would like. Now, most accountants, when I speak to them, they've got no idea. They can't really think about that. They can't see the wood for the trees. Some of them have got a really good idea, but they're just not able to get there. So actually having clarity on what you want to achieve is paramount. And then 
what we do is help them reverse engineer that back into a solid strategy. Now, once you've come up with your vision, it's easier to reverse engineer that back into a strategy on how you're going to get there. So clarity is about vision, but it's also about a few other things as well. So we help people to put in place um, clarity about their pricing. Many accountants I speak to, they're either billing by the hour still, they're, they're coming up with a fixed price, but it's not as profitable as it could be. They're not able to demonstrate the value in what they do to their clients, and therefore their clients don't really buy into it. Uh, and, and therefore they end up charging competitively or maybe just a little above. So we help people get clarity over a pricing strategy that's largely value based and we help them to demonstrate and, and talk about the value that they deliver and therefore their clients come on board with that. Even the most price sensitive clients, most clients aren't price sensitive by the way, they're value sensitive and if they don't get the value then obviously price is just going to be the, the deciding factor isn't it? Um, also, we help them to put into place a clear marketing strategy so they've got clarity on the types of clients that they want to attract and start to focus more on those kinds of clients. So their ideal client. Now, hopefully you'll, you'll agree with me that having clarity as a startup is, is really important. You know, what, what are you aiming for? What, what kind of business do you want to achieve? So that's really important. Starting to get the right kinds of clients. But also, um, it's never too late to put in place a vision either. Even if you've got one, maybe it's, it's covered in dust, maybe it's no longer relevant to you anymore. So wherever you are in this stage, having clarity on what you want to achieve, having a strategy to get there, a pricing strategy, a marketing strategy, all of those things are paramount. So wherever you are, even at the point of wanting to exit, how much do you want to exit for? What kind of value? How, how long do you want the handover process to be? Many accountants end up it being a three-year handover process. You know, if I look at uh, Graceful Exit, if I look at this case study at the back of this brochure, this is Val, um, she decided how much she wanted to exit for and the handover period, she says, as short a time as possible. So she actually exited for two and a half times what she'd set her heart on and uh, the handover period was just six weeks and she, she was able to walk away from that business. So, you know, there's, it's never too late to come up with these kinds of visions and work out exactly how you're going to get there. Uh, okay, so does this make sense? Give us a yes, no in the chat box. Now, the next stage... I didn't quite give myself enough room, so thank you. Lots of yeses coming in. The next stage is positioning. Positioning, the way that we are positioned in the marketplace is so important. And I see this time and again, you know, accountants' websites, for example, and, and websites are just one example here, but if I look at accountants' websites, largely they say very similar things. They're not positioning themselves as different. So, for example, most accountants' websites might say, we're accountants and business advisor. Uh, they might say, we're different, we're forward thinking, we're proactive, we're not like other accountants. But then they all say, we do accounts, we do bookkeeping, we do payroll, perhaps we do audits, whatever it might be. And really they're just positioning themselves in the same way as all the other accountants. Now when you position yourself in exactly the same way as your competition, the only deciding factor is going to be price, isn't it? So we help accountants to differentiate themselves so that they can't be compared on price. And that might be come up with, it's an old expression now, I think unique selling points, and I think they're important, your USPs, but actually what we focus on is your ESPs, your emotional selling points. We have to realize now in this day and age, you know, once upon a time, people could walk down the local high street, they'd perhaps meet up with uh, three accountants on there, and then they'd choose which one they, you know, they felt was the, the best match. Now they've got access to Googling, and hundreds and hundreds of accountants will come up. They take a bit longer to decide, unless they're just the price sensitive ones, um, on who they're going to work with. What, we, what is being discovered more and more now is that people are buying people. You know, it's, it's no longer the B2B and the B2C, it's the H2H, it's human to human. 
So actually being able to emotionally connect with somebody and position yourself as somebody who can help somebody to grow their business as well as just do the complaint stuff for them is paramount. So these are the types of things that, you know, are really important to put in place. So again, right from the get go, positioning yourself. Positioning yourself in such a way that you are speaking not just to anyone and everyone, but actually specifically to your target market. You're, you're um, resonating with the pains and the challenges and the frustrations that your target client will have. Okay, so that's all important in positioning. Uh, and again, it's never too late to put these things in place, is it? Um, many times the reason that the lifestyle business is stuck, maybe at 120k and overworked and underpaid is because maybe a large proportion of their clients are not ideal clients. Um, so starting to, to get those clients right, but also there's ways to analyze the client base to look for the opportunities within them and have quality conversations to raise those fees. So all of that comes through from, uh, positioning, um, whether you're scaling up again, this is about positioning your team in this case uh, as being the go-to people rather than coming to you and, and we help to um, to obviously develop the team so uh, mature again this is about focusing on what you want to be if you come up with a vision you've got to position yourself as being more forward thinking rather than that kind of dinosaur uh, and of course positioning yourself in, in exit equally uh, applicable the next one here is what I call value. Oops, value. Value really is, is the name suggests, it's delivering more and more value to your clients. So remember that pyramid, you know, we want to be going higher up. Now, even if you've got a compliance only client, there are ways to add extra value, bonus things to that, which actually uh, make them realize that what you're doing is, is much more important to them. Uh, you're adding convenience to them. You're adding bells and whistles that will encourage them to pay, but actually adding value right through to delivering more advisory type of uh, training to clients. So again, if you've got much more value to offer than your competition, then your fee is going to increase further. If you're, you're having much more powerful conversations with your clients, etc so this applies again and i know I'm, I'm stating the obvious now this applies to every single one of these a future uh thinking business is going to be much more valuable to a buyer as well isn't it so value is about delivering advisory but on a lower level a much more comfortable level because what we do here at value is we get a lot of the team members of um, accountancy businesses on board with delivering this so that that bottleneck isn't happening. Um, it, it's easy to be, you know, the part of the owner of the business to be thinking, well, I need to be delivering this. I've got the most experience, etc. But actually the stuff that we talk about in here is getting the team involved in delivering this. Okay. Now the next stage is gearing gearing i i use the word gearing because the metaphor that i often use is uh, imagine a car um, uh, it's manual gears uh, it's in first gear and you're driving along you've got the foot to the floor the engine is screaming its head off uh, the vehicle's not moving very fast you're in first gear when you put the clutch in and change to second gear suddenly the engine relaxes and the vehicle moves faster and, and that's really about what happens here. So if you imagine that engine being the business owner screaming its head off because there's so much reliance on it and the vehicle, the business isn't moving that fast. Gearing is about putting the scalability mechanisms in place so that as the business grows, the owner or owners can start to relax a little bit because the pressure's less on them. They can start to work more on the business than in the business. Uh, and as it scales up, they're earning more and they're working less. And that's that's quite desirable, of course, isn't it? So gearing, again, putting the mechanisms in place allows you to make sure from the get go, you've got the right mechanisms in place. So you're never going to be that bottleneck. 
Um, this allows you to start to scale up in the ways that you might want to, but also it allows you to create a business that's not reliant on you, the owner. So in Val's case, that little uh, thing that I showed you, she was able just to step away from that business uh, because it wasn't reliant on her. Uh, let me show you another quick scaling one here. Look, So there's a couple of examples here. Um, this is uh, all of these, by the way, I've got testimonials in. So this was Paul. Uh, he was absolutely snowed under. He was at this scaling stage. In fact, actually, in his case, he was more at the mature, but sort of scaling as well. He was stuck at 800K. Now, a lot of businesses that may be on here may, may not be around 800K, but by putting these mechanisms in place, he was able to work significantly less and scale that business up. It's now 6 million turnover and growing. Uh, another one here from Dan. He was about 1, point, uh, sorry, 1 million in turnover, and he's since trebled that. So, you know, he's really, really grown, and, and as a result of putting these mechanisms in place. Automation is next. I'll just put automate, but automation. Um, automation is about making sure that you are tapping into and embracing the best technologies and the systems that you'll need to ensure that, again, they, they're kind of very linked to ensure that the business is going to operate in your absence. It's going to be as efficient as possible. It's utilizing the best technologies. Um, and again, you know, it's obvious that this applies to all of these, doesn't it? By the way, I'm, I've not seen any questions come up, but if you've got any questions along the, the way, feel free just to pop them into the chat box um, or feel free to challenge me on anything I'm saying as well. OK, um, now at this point in the journey, we've better positioned us. We've got clarity on what we want to achieve. We've better positioned ourselves in the marketplace. We're adding much more value. We're delivering more advisory services to clients. But we've put the scalability mechanisms in place, which means that the team can deliver this and we can continue to grow and de develop that team so that it's not reliant on the owner. So in theory, what we've done here now is we've created a machine, OK, that can grow and it wants feeding. It wants feeding with more clients. OK, so in position, we're generating client inquiries. But now we're going to put that on steroids. So this is where profile comes in. So the next stage is what we call profile. Now, forgive me, I'm not very good at writing at 45 degrees, it would appear. Um, so raising the profile of the business, what that does, and there are many ways to do this. It can be, on, it can be through social media, it can be through advertising. There are many ways. Um, that allow you to effectively turn a tap on to start generating incoming leads. So here, this is about putting proper sales pipelines in place, proper funnels. Uh, yes, I gather it is being recorded and that you will get a copy, by the way. Um, so, like I say, you've got a tap that you can switch on. Well, who wants a tap that you can switch on at any of these stages? Well, of course you do. And you can turn that on until you're at capacity and then you can turn it down again. And that it really is as simple as that. And this is, it's not time onus, time hungry. There might be a little bit of time involved in setting it up. But actually, the stuff that we teach accountants to put in place here is that it's leveraging their time. Everything we do here is about leveraging time so that um, you're working less and earning more. Now, for some people, once they've gone through this process, they want to develop more skills, more advisory skills, more coaching type and consulting type skills. Um, I'm going to uh, thank you for challenging me. I am going to uh, disagree with that because marketing doesn't cost money. It can cost money, but there are many ways. And, and obviously we, we work with people at this point and this point where actually um, there, there are lots of free ways to, to market as well. And, and then again, not time hungry as well. So uh, um, thank you for asking that. Uh, and, and I'll address that um in due course so the final one on here is what we call purposeful what we find is that once they've gone through this stage those owners want to deliver even more value to their clients and so here is uh what we specifically do anyway is teach them how to deliver pure coaching to their clients to build on those skills uh, to affect many more areas of the business than the ones that are perhaps just 
around the, 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 the numbers in the accounts, if you like, can really make a profound difference. They're changing lives. So again, a business that's changing lives and making a profound difference to its clients is going to be worth more uh, and, and much more enjoyable to work in as well. So look, that is a, a quick overview. It was a quick overview of the, uh, the seven stages. Now, first of all, I've got a couple of questions. Give us a yes or no. If you would be interested in learning a little bit more about each of these stages and how you can start to implement some of the stuff into your own business through future webinars that I could perhaps run for IFA. Okay, so that's, that's cool. All right, brilliant. Now, let me just type in, I am also going to Okay, now uh, once those yeses have stopped coming in. Um, so, first of all, thank you. Uh, I, I pretty much am at the, the end of this session now. Are there any questions from you, by the way? I've got one final thing that I'd like to say. Um, I'm not seeing questions. What I'm gonna very quickly do, just before I, I finish here, is I'm just putting a link into the chat box. Now, I recommend that you click that link just so it opens up in a page, but you don't necessarily have to do anything on that page yet. And that's where you can download your copy. And if you want, I mean, many people do it anyway. You can, you can download them all if you want, but uh, you can download your version of this, the, uh, the brochure of your choice or choices. Uh, just open that in a separate window for now, but you can come back to me. What's really important to me is that it's about helping people achieve what I call the seven F's, all right? And those seven F's, again, they'll probably be obvious, but is allowing the owners of businesses, and of course, accountants, no exception to that, those business owners, regardless of where they are, to spend more time with their families and more time with their friends. More time on their health, so fitness, just to make it an F. More time on their health, because actually many people, they don't get time to do that. And for me, the definition of success, it shouldn't come at the expense of family, friends and health. But also um, improving their financial situation, maybe paying off mortgages, um, becoming debt free, maybe financially independent, getting a better sense of fulfillment. We all want to have some kind of fun, don't we? We want to enjoy running our business, not see it as a hard slow, not getting up and thinking, oh, God, do you? Or seeing that phone number come up of that client that you hate speaking to. It's like, oh, my gosh. So we want to have fun, but we also want to be future-proofed as well so that we don't become obsolete. Yeah. So these are really important to me. And I hope that they're important to you as well, for you to achieve yourself, but also for your clients. So, um, okay, that's me. So uh, back to you, Paul. I will take off my, um, I, I have kind of dominated the thing because I'm on spotlight, so I shall move back to you. Uh, feel free to download whichever brochure or brochures that you'd like to uh, on that link. And uh, Paul's got a bit of wrapping up to do. Jane, thank you very much for that. That was wonderful. Um, I'm hoping that it, it's encouraged a lot of people to think. And from my perspective, in in looking at things from a, a BD, BD team member growth perspective, a lot of new people I deal with who want to join our organisation don't particularly think of these things when they should be. So that that's great. Um, I just wanted to run through, as I say, this was the first one of this year. Um, as you can see on the screen, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on. So please make a note of these. And if any, any or all of those interest you, then please sign up in the way you did for this for this one. So um, I'll leave, we can leave that on the screen for a second and, and see what's what's happening there. The There's face-to-face -face CPD happening. I will be at the London meeting on the 6th of March. Obviously that's our biggest meeting. I will also be um, hot footing it to the Birmingham meeting on the 7th of March. So I uh, would love to see some of you folks, if you're um, if you're anywhere in, within the Birmingham area 
or can get there um, quite easily, then I would like to see, see you there. That would, but that would be good also. But there's a, just a range of events we've got there that are going on until uh, that's uh, that's only in um, in the like, next couple of months. And then obviously the one I wanted to talk about, as you probably thought I would, would be the IFA conference on the 25th of June. Splendid day out. I know I'm going to say that you get a lot of CPD, but hopefully, more importantly, you get come away with a lot more information and a lot more insight into current events and maybe different ways to look at things. So, would commend that to you. Love to see you see you all there. Uh, it's a great event, and there will be an early bird special in operation on that to save you money. Um, so that's that dealt with. Um, I'm glad you've all, you've all stuck with me because I can see how many people are on this call and not one person now has has, has, has left left the call. Oh, one person has. Okay, damn. Okay, so um, that's that. There again, there's your um, online CPD as well. Uh, there again, take note of those. If there's anything on there, the AML matters. I think is very important, especially for fa fairly new um, fairly new people to practice. Um, and obviously, if if other things take your take your um take, take your interest, please please look at those. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, and it will be the last thing, is renewals. Um, there are still three or four hundred of our lovely members in practice that haven't completed their renewals yet. So that's twofold. They haven't paid their monies. And equally importantly, they haven't completed their declaration. So if you can, if you if you can sort yourselves out and please pay your fees if you haven't. If I'm preaching to the converted, that's great because thank you very much. But we we are um, we we do need you to do that. And obviously, uh, if you don't, as as of the end of March, you'll be non-compliant, which. And no one wants to go down that road, surely. So if you can attend to that, um, if there's any problems, any difficulties, if you're not aware there's a discount scheme, if you're, you've, you're, um, you're on a low income through ill health or problems outside of your control, the backstop to all of this is that you've got, if you've got problems that stop you paying your renewals or doing your declarations, please let us know. We can't accommodate you if we don't know there's a problem. So talk to, um, send an email to membership at, call us up on the number on the screen. Just let us know what's going on. But um, renewals are in process, but we, I'm coming back to that word urgency. We do need you to, to sort that out. Um, so that's that's um, that's really all, all I've got to say, apart from a last thank you to Shane for, for for sharing his thoughts and ideas. Shane is on LinkedIn. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff. I see he's just posted, posted something this morning that was particularly interesting to me. So I would encourage you to, to link up with him on LinkedIn, see what he's got to say. And in my opinion, it will help you grow your business. So thank you for joining us. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank, Thank you. you all.